Hi, my name is Karolina Mianowski, and I will present the paper Evaluating the CCSDS123 Compressor Running on RISC V and ARM Architectures. So, the presentation is organized as follows. First, I will give the context that justify the contribution of the paper. Then, I will show the background and some related works. Next, I will explain the materials and methods that were used to perform this work. And finally, I will present some results and the conclusion. So, remote sensing systems collect data from the surface of the Earth, typically from satellites or mounted on aircrafts. And this data have a wide range of applications, such as to monitor shoreline changes and measure the ocean temperature. And hyperspectral image is a type of image that is captured by these sensors, and it is a three-dimensional array of pixel data, where each layer is an array representing a single band of the image. Usually, these images contain several dozens to hundreds of spectral layers, which causes hyperspectral image sensors to capture large amounts of data. So, since system onboard remote sensors have limited storage capacity, it requires data to be transmitted to the ground station. Also, communication between these platforms and ground stations has been its limitations, making a compression algorithm a crucial element for these systems. These images can be lossy or lossless compressed, and the compression algorithm must be adapted depending on the computational capability of the environment of operation. So, to facilitate this communication, the Consultative Committee for Space Data System, which is also known as CCSDS, developed the CCSDS123 standard as a lossless compression method for hyperspectral images. However, it has a high computational cost, which can compromise the restrictions that are imposed by the computer systems that are used in spaceships. Therefore, hardware designers must assess whether the computational platform, especially the processor, meets the algorithm's requirements, and this assessment should guide the designers in selecting processor architectures and technology that best meet system requirements. So, given this context, we presented an evaluation of performance and power consumption of the CCSDS123 algorithm when running on two instruction set architectures, RISC-V RV32i and ARMv7. We also evaluated the execution of the compressor over two real-time operating systems, Zephyr and FreeRTOS, when running on RISC-V architecture. This is an example of a hyperspectral image, and as you can see, it is a data cube that is composed of several 2D images at different wavelengths, but referring to the same surface. And as I mentioned before, the main use of these images is remote sensing. And this concept was created by NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, which developed the Airborne Visible Infrared Imaging Spectrometer, which is also known as Everis. This spectrometer was the first full-spectrum hyperspectral imaging instrument to be used for remote sensing systems. Everest captured 224 band images with wavelengths ranging from 380 nanometers to 2510 nanometers. Like I said, we used a CCSDS algorithm implementation and it comprises two primary blocks, the predictor and the encoder. The predictor block uses an adaptive linear prediction method to predict each image sample value based on the values of nearby samples in a small three-dimensional neighborhood. The prediction in each sample generally depends on the values of neighboring samples in the current band and in some previous bands. The amount of previous bands is a parameter that is specified by the user, and in this work we use the number 3. The first step is to compute a local sum of neighboring sample values within each spectral band. The algorithm that we use, the local sum is column-oriented, and it means that the value of the local sum will be equal to four times the neighboring sample value in the previous row, as it is represented in this image. After that, the local difference, that is the subtraction between the local sum and four times the current sample, will be calculated. The third step is to make a weighted sum between local differences and current band weights. These weights are initialized when the system is started and it is updated after the processing of each sample. Then the local sum and the locally weighted difference is used to calculate the scalar predicted sample, which is two times the predicted value. 
Following the weights are updated based on the scaled prediction error, which is the difference between twice the current sample and the scaled predicted sample, to modify the weights of the band that is currently being calculated and to adapt them to the image statistics. Finally, the mapped prediction residual is computed and it is the difference between each sample and its prediction. And it then compares it with the smallest difference between the predicted sample and the limits of minimum and maximum value. The encoder consists of the compression and organization of the samples, and the compressed hyperspectral image consists of a package with a header followed by a body. Um, the header consists of three parts, the image metadata, the predictor metadata, and the entropy encoder metadata. The image metadata has 12 bytes, and it contains information such as its sizes, sample type, and coding order. The metadata of the predictor has information regarding the parameters that are used in the prediction, and it has a variable size. Finally, the entropy encoder metadata also has a variable size, and it contains the parameters that are used by the encoder, which can have two different adapted approaches for the samples and for the blocks. In this case, the type of approach will influence the size and the necessary information concerning the encoder besides influencing the compression itself. This process is done by using the encoder to assemble the package body. This table shows the works that are related to this paper as well as the metrics that relate to them. Every paper in this table approaches the evaluation between ARM and RISC-V architectures and all of them analyze the operating frequency and the energy consumption, but only three of them, besides this work, discuss the operating voltage. For the experiments, we selected a small 5x5x5 five by five by five hyperspectral image to enable tests using only the data cache memory and also to avoid frequent access to the main memory due to data cache misses. The compressor was executed as bare metal code on two development kits the sci 5 hi 5 for RISC-V, and Z-Bar development kit for ARM. The hi 5 kit has a Freedom E310, which is a low-power microcontroller system on chip that can operate at up to 320 MHz and performs 1.61 dMIPS per MHz. This microcontroller is an RV32Y based processor with 16 kilobytes of instruction cache and 16 kilobytes of data cache memories. It also supports multiplication and division in hardware and integrates several peripherals. For the experiments, the HiFi was configured to run at 320 megahertz, and we used the Freedom e software development kit, which comprises Sci-Fi Freedom Metal library that enables the bare metal programming. The Z-Board has a Zinc 7000 system on chip that integrates the FPGA area and a hard ARM Cortex-A9 processor with 32 kilobytes instruction cache and a 32 kilobytes data cache. This ARM processor can operate at up to 800 MHz and performs 2.5 dMIPS per MHz. For the experiment, it was configured to run at 800 MHz. To program and start the firmware in the ARM processor, we used the Xilinx Vivado design suite, which enabled the instantiation of the ARM core, and we also used the Xilinx software development kit, which is also known as XSDK, and it enables writing, compiling, and uploading the CCSDS compressor to the ARM processor in the Z board. Also, in order to assess the impact of the compressor over an operating system layer abstraction, we evaluated the compressor's execution over two real-time operating systems, the FreeRTOS and FreeRTOS, when running on the RISC-V processor. To consider the cost regarding the task switching, we defined two tasks when using the RTOSs, a high-priority task, which is the CCSDS123 compressor, and a low-priority task, which prints the Hello World message on the terminal screen. The low-priority task executes repeatedly until it is interrupted by the high-priority task. To evaluate the performance, we measure the number of cycles that are required by each platform to run the CCSDS123 algorithm. For HiFi 1, in both implementations, bare metal and RTOS-based, 
The processing latency was obtained by reading the register that stores the number of cycles that are executed by the processor. The value on the register was read using a function in the assembly language at the start and at the end of the algorithm execution, and the difference between these two values is the number of cycles that was used by the processor. For ZBoard, we used the Xilinx library, which contains a function that returns the value stored in the cycle counter register. As in High Five One, we calculate the difference between the values stored in this register at the end and at the beginning of the execution. To estimate the power dissipated by each board, we measured the maximum current drained by the platforms when running the compressor. We then estimated the energy consumption by considering the power dissipation and the processing latency. This table shows the metrics that we used to evaluate the performance and energy consumption of the Z board and the Hi5 One when running the bare metal code of the CCSDS123 algorithm. From the results, we can know that the ARM processor is 118 times faster than the RISC-V processor as it works at a higher operating frequency. Also, RISC-V is a microcontroller with less computing power and a microarchitecture simpler than that of the ARM processor, what explains the much higher number of cycles to execute the algorithm. On the other hand, as RISC-V processor works at a lower voltage and drain less current, it dissipates 2.66 less power than the ARM processor, and this feature is essential in small satellite systems due to, to the onboard power supply constraints. However, it is worth noting that the higher the processing latency, the higher the energy consumption. This table presents the performance of RISC-V processor when running the CCSDS123 compressor over the two real-time operating systems. We can notice that both RTOSs increases the processing latency, but the performance of the platform based on the free RTOS is 3.2 times higher than that based on the free RTOS. Furthermore, free RTOS adds an overhead of 35.6%, to the processing latency when compared with the bare metal execution, which can be tolerated in designs in which multiple tasks need to be executed and real-time requirements must be fulfilled. So this work presented the evaluation of platforms based on the RISC-V and ARM processors running the CCSDS123 compressor through a set of experiments that enable to compare their performance and power consumption. The results show that the hi one enables to build a solution which can execute the compressor algorithm, requiring a lower current level from the power supply, what is a requirement for power-constrained systems such as satellites. On the other hand, the ARM processor results in much lower latency and energy consumption. Moreover, the FPGA area of the Z-board can be used to integrate a custom processor and this approach enables reducing further the processing latency and the energy consumed by the predictor block, which is the most critical part of the CCSDS compressor. Therefore, as future work, we intend to integrate this custom processor with the ARM processor into the FPGA and evaluate costs and performance. We will also seek to apply software optimizations such as memoization techniques, to analyze the impacts of using this approach as a software acceleration technique. Any questions can be sent to this email address, and this work was supported by the Programa de Bolsas Universitárias de Santa Catarina, UNEDU, and CNPq, Conselho Nacional de Desenvolvimento Científico e Tecnológico. Finally, I would like to thank you and invite you all to visit our laboratory profile on Instagram. Thanks for your attention, and now I'm available for questions.